Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here, Car Chronicles. You know, wanting to pop in. I did a video talking about how to get a man's attention. You can watch that if you haven't watched it. And in there, I got to a point where I was talking about how sometimes you can have this saltine cracker over here looking at you, wanting you, but you looking at this other man who looked like an Oreo ready to be dipped in some milk. And so you chasing this Oreo when you got this nice, healthy saltine cracker right here in front of you. Now, that was just a random, random uh, metaphor that kind of hit me in the midst of talking. But the question started to pop up over and over about talking about when we want someone who doesn't want us or when we want someone who isn't good for us. Now... It goes both ways, men and women. So you kind of, but just for the sake of me talking off the top of my head without note cards and PowerPoints, I'm gonna talk to the women cause that's who asked the question. And then fellas just kind of invert this information or apply it to your situation. And I'll try to touch on that as well. But one thing I've always seen in relationships is women wanting a man who sometimes is either older wanting a man who is like the thug the tough guy the bad boy you know the guy skipping class the guy getting in trouble and when you look at that a lot of times what it is is this man to a woman may be coveted to by many women so that for therefore it makes him more desirable because so many women want him but then you got to ask the question why do you want him why do you want this guy just because he's a tough guy just because he's a bad boy and really what it is is it's because he represents security so a woman a lot of times is looking for security and thinking financial security and then also physical security and will a lot of times forego emotional security to get financial or physical security. And so when you get this guy that you feel like represents a certain type of security and so many other women want him, it gives you a sense of accomplishment. Like you got the prize, like you got the most coveted guy. And when you think about this, what happens when you want somebody who everybody else wants and you want somebody for the wrong reasons? Now, it's different if you meet this man and he's a great person and he has a good heart and he has great conversation and he checks off so many things off of your list and he just so happens to be an athlete or a drug dealer or the cool guy or the popular person, then that's a little different. But in most cases, it's those things. It's something else that the guy has that makes him more desirable. And when you think about it, it's a lot of people who without money, without fame, would not have the partner that they have, would not have the options that they have. But all of a sudden, you give somebody some notoriety, you give somebody some money, you give them some fame, and all of a sudden, they're cute. All of a sudden, they're very handsome or very attractive or beautiful. If it's a man talking about a woman, all of a sudden. But that same person is people who look just like that person without the money and the fame. And that person without the money and the fame does not have a partner that is the equivalent equivalent of what that famous person has. So what is it? And when you think about this, you have to really look within. You got to look within and you got to ask yourself, why do I want who I want? Why do I want who I want? What do I want this person for? What are the reasons? So if you can get to the bottom of it and the reason is truly based on your standards, this man is a man of God. This man is patient. 
He's kind. He's well-spoken. He's understanding. He's compassionate. He's giving. He's forgiving. He's gentle. But yet, at the same time, he's confident and he's strong. He's ambitious. Now, think about this. None of what I just said, none of that touches on his height, his looks, his weight, his income, his complexion, his nationality. So you have to really get to the root of why you want this person. And so oftentimes what happens is, is we desire someone based on our insecurities. We want the person who will make us feel worthy. We want the person who affirms us in the sense of you end up seeking approval instead of seeking love. Because if you can get that person, then that means that you're beautiful, that you're handsome, that you are worthy, that you're worth it if you can get that person. If you can get a person that looks like this or dressed like this or makes this amount of money, then in your mind, that validates you. So you have to ask yourself, am I seeking validation or am I seeking love? Because when you take this thing all the way back to take it back to grade school, and that's one thing that we don't oftentimes do, take it back to grade school and think about the person, the guy that the women wanted. A lot of times it's the guy who is the class clown or, or, or he's just the most popular because he has the nicest shoes or he has the nicest clothes or he is the most athletic. And so, or maybe he's the tallest or maybe he is unique. He had something about him is unique. That's different from the norm. And so now all the girls want him. And when you take it all the way back and then you bring it all the way up to adulthood, and you identify your type, when you really think about it, you have to ask yourself, is my type determined or was my type determined by the actors and the models and or the pro athletes or the celebrities, the famous rappers, the famous musicians? And so, and so a lot of times when I'm talking to a woman in a coaching call and she's describing her type, a lot of women will say, you know, like the Idris Elba type or like the Michael Ely type or like the Michael B. Jordan type or like the. And it's always like this type, like this look that comes from being programmed by movies and media. And it's not based on your heart's desire. And I thought I had to think about this as a man. Because a lot of men would come to me and in our coaching or uh, matchmaking, when I used to do matchmaking, I don't do that anymore. When I used to do matchmaking, just because I had so many clients and I was able to kind of, oh, you single, oh, you single, okay, y'all meet each other. What I was noticing, it, it, it was guys that were coming to me and they would say like, like, like a white guy would say he wants a wealthy Asian woman. I would hear white guys say that. And I'm like, okay, what is this about? Like some kind of fetish? Like what what why don't you want a white woman? You know, and why she gotta be wealthy. And then black guys would be like, or or other guys of different races would be like, okay, I want this woman. She gotta be exotic. She gotta look exotic. She gotta have long hair. She gotta have light eyes with dark hair with olive skin and an accent. Or she gotta be red with long black hair with a perfect body and she gotta be five foot six to five foot eight. And it would be all these things. And, and what I started to notice is the guys, the men were speaking from an insecurity. The men were, it was something 
to where his type of person, whoever he is or was, was overlooked or ostracized. And the type of woman he wants now is the type of woman who didn't want him. When that woman was in middle school, she didn't want him. She wanted this other guy. And so now as a man, he wants that type of woman because that to have that woman would validate his existence. It would make him feel accomplished like he has arrived and like now he is worthy. And so what's happening is I, I've said it before, nickels wanting dimes. And, and I'm not saying that anybody is a nickel. What I'm saying is you could want this person that you see as a dime piece, but that dime piece look at you like a nickel. And so, and now this dime piece could look at you like a nickel, but then all of a sudden you add one thing to you, like you get some money, now you a dime piece to that person who you think is a dime piece, but that person didn't want you. Not a person using you. And this is what we see and happen so often. And so it's a lot of women who would be seen as unattractive to this man. But because this woman has money or because she has power or because she has influence or because she has a position not all of a sudden, the guy will make a concession. He will compromise his preferences or even his standards. Not Typically, it's not standards because she is a good woman. He'll compromise his preferences to get with this woman because she brings something else to the table that will benefit him. And the, and the same thing happens the other way around. So here's what it is. You have to really look at this person and say, you know what? What's wrong with this person? Because he's what I was talking about is sometimes I called it a saltine cracker that came up out of nowhere. But I was trying to think of a healthy, a healthier snack and then a unhealthy snack. So sometimes you see this snack and you want him. But it's this other guy right here in front of you shooting this shot trying to talk to you trying to be with you but you don't want him you don't want him because he might be two inches shorter than you, than you want he might make five thousand dollars less than you want he might be a different complexion than you want he might not have every single thing and so you want this guy over here but that guy over there, it's a million women want him. It's a million women want him, and there's so many women want him that it's gone to his head. So now he don't even really respect and value women. And then you personally might not be attractive to him. But you just thinking about what you want. And I remember me being a man, I remember coaching a lot of women and they'll be like, you know, I know I'm attractive and, you know, so many people have told me I'm attractive and that, you know, I look good. I know I'm pretty. I know that I'm beautiful. I know I'm a great catch and just, you know, I know this and I just cannot understand it, you know, why it's not working out. And I'm a man. So I'm on the other line and I'm sitting there like, oh, okay. Oh, oh, you know you pretty, huh? Uh, 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 oh, so who told, um, and I'm trying to find the words. Oh, so, so, um, so who, who told you that you were, you know, attractive and, and, you know, how often do you, do you hear that? And so I'm trying to find the word, get to the bottom of it, just to understand where is this coming from, you know, and who's saying this? Because you know how you, when you got on an ugly sweater and your mama told you that sweater was ugly, but you get a bunch of compliments. What we don't understand is that humans are petty. 
So when you got that ugly sweat on, humans will look and say, oh, that's a nice sweater. And you like, thank you. And then as soon as you walk by it, <clears throat> did you see that sweater? That sweater is, oh my God. How she came out in the house in that? And so we don't understand humans petty. And so just that's why you cannot let people telling you that you beautiful, that you handsome, that you all this. You can't let that go to your head. You can't let I I don't listen to compliments. I don't listen to compliments. I'm I stay humble. Whatever somebody say, oh, that was a good book. Thank you. But it's in one end, out the other. You get you can't let that blow your head up because your mama keep telling you you beautiful. Now, you beautiful in the sight of the Lord. And you might actually be beautiful. You beautiful in the sight of the Lord. Now, you God's child. God does not make ugly. But what I'm trying to say is, everybody don't think everybody look good. So, it's somebody who might look at you and say, you gorgeous. Somebody else might look at you and you not they type. So, you decent. You're going to look at certain people and say, wow. You're going to look at other people and say, ouch. So it's a personal preference, and that's what we have to understand. And so you got to get to the root. You got to get to the root of why you want what you want. Is it based in your insecurity? Is it because you are actually seeking approval? Because you want somebody who will make you feel good who will make you feel like you accomplished somebody. Because if you could get this snack that you lusting after, then all of a sudden that means, yes, I must be somebody if I could get with this type of person, with a person that look like this or got this or do this, I must be special. And that's what we tell ourselves. Because me and my wife, we going on 13 years of marriage. And she may think that I'm handsome. I may think that she's beautiful, but it's other types of men and it's other types of women. So there might be this other type of woman online who is a this color, who got this kind of shape, who got this kind of, you know, lips or cheekbones or, or whatever. And society may say, Wow, that's beautiful. And I may look at her and say, wow, she's a beautiful person. But should I take and ignore the connection and the love that I have with my wife to wait on somebody who looks beautiful to everybody? Or to wait on somebody that every man wants? Or say, you know what? I got a beautiful woman right here in front of me. Like, this is a good looking woman. Ain't nothing wrong with this woman. And yeah, her butt might not be just like her butt. This body part might not be just like her body part. The cheek, her cheekbone might not be just like her cheekbone. Her eyes, her nose, her lips. Instead of comparing and saying, well, I want this because this is the standard of beauty or this is what the magazine said is the number one most beautiful woman in the world. So I want a woman that look like that. And, and subconsciously, this is how we being programmed. And you don't even realize it. And so I had to take and I had to start really doing the work myself to understand this. And I'm talking like as a married man, understanding human connection and studying human behavior and the connections in relationships. And because I do this so much as a relationship coach, I can look at two people and I can tell why they're together. I can tell why they're together. I can see. And, and I, you can't, I can't speak names because you never know who's going to bump into this video. But I want you to think about you do the you do the work. I want you to think about five to ten celebrity couples. Write them down. Write them down. And now take that couple and picture them in the eighth grade. Picture them in the eighth grade. 
Now ask yourself what they have been sweethearts in the eighth grade, ninth grade. What that couple had been a couple, ninth grade, just based on looks. And understand that we we look different. We grow into our looks. We you might not look the same as adult as you did in eighth grade, but still, it still applies. Because that says something as well. That says something as well. Because if you ain't want me in the eighth grade, don't want me now. Don't want me now. If you ain't like how I look in the eighth grade, don't like me now. Because attraction is attraction. So you still was a version of yourself. But when you think about this, you're going to be like, oh. And it ain't even got to be eighth grade. It, you could keep it in the present. And just take away their money. That's the other side of it. So if it don't work with the the looks process of how a person grows, write down five to ten couples, celebrity couples that's in the media. Remove the money. Remove the money. Remove the status. Remove all of that. And although I have, you know, an online following and, you know, been on Oprah and Tyra, it's certain people that will call me a celebrity but i'm not a celebrity there's certain people that will say that just because of where they from or how they view somebody if you got millions of um supporters online if you from certain places you may see a person with a million followers online as a celebrity or if somebody go on oprah or tyra banks or national television or coaching celebrities you may see that person a celebrity but i'm not a celebrity i'm talking about real celebrity i'm talking about a-list celebrity me and my wife got together when we was broke. You saw I was flat broke. So don't put us in the equation because we were together before the money and before success. And so it was just a heart connection. But look at these couples now and go through it and you're going to start to see. You're going to start to see what I'm talking about. How we choose people for the wrong reasons. We choose people for the wrong reasons in a lot of cases and I so sure wish I could say some names but I don't want to hurt nobody feeling I don't want I do not want to hurt nobody feeling step on nobody told call nobody out but when you go through these couple you'll be able to think and you'll be able to see okay now this type of woman here does not date a man who look like this that that man right there is not that woman type that woman type was the man she was with who dogged her out and trashed her. And now she got tired of being trashed. Now she went to this man who she would not have been with him if he was not a millionaire. If he looked just like how he looked, but was not a millionaire, she would have kept it moving. Because she wanted that man over there that dogged out. And so we going in our relationships and we choosing people for the wrong reasons so, but in order for you to break past this and if you get past this and you are single you can actually end up married within the next 18 to 24 months if you really get to the root of why you are attracted to who you are attracted to and what is it coming from because and I start to do this work and I start to look and I start and I, I what I would take and do is I would look at a woman who is outside of what society says is beautiful. So I, and, and that's all different types of women. So I would look at these different women and I would look at this woman and I would say, you know what, if I took and I removed the social constructs, if I took and I removed the programming, that's a beautiful human being. That is a beautiful woman because her skin, her smile, her walk, her cheekbones, her nose, she is beautiful in her own right. And just because she does not look like uh, what the TV shows and the movies showed me does not mean she's unattractive. But men cannot see that because they're looking through the lenses that have been given to them by the movies and the media and vice versa. When you look at this guy and I, I cannot look at a guy 
and tell what's a, a handsome guy. Now, I could say I know ugly when I see it, but I'm a man. So that would be wrong for me to call a man ugly because beauty is in the eye of the beholder and I'm not be trying to behold the beauty of a man. So I could say what I think is ugly, but that would be wrong of me. So I don't call anybody ugly, God's children ugly. But if you look at this, and I, I got a perfect example. I got a homeboy. And he um he does my security. And he is really he's dark skinned. He's dark skinned. Um he's about twelve oh one AM. That's about his color. About twelve oh one AM. And and my mama and my sister and different women would say, Oh, I love his skin. Oh, I love his skin. He's just got some beautiful skin. And he is a handsome man. He is a handsome man. But he over 300 pounds. You know, he, he played offensive line in college. We played football together. And they would call this man handsome and all of this right here. But then I say, well, you, you see the quality and you see he handsome. But why you don't give men, he taken. But why you don't give men like that? a chance oh well uh oh well you know well oh well you know you know and all of these excuses and i'm like well it's so many men like that that's single and they might not have a six pack and they might not be six foot tall and they might not be caramel complected or pecan tan or you know whatever you looking for but still handsome men and so don't see don't see the good in a man when he just your friend don't see the good in a man when you just gonna put him in a in a friend box and say oh he cute like a little teddy bear but then you want to go out in the world and you want the ken doll but then Ken Doll don't want you. And then Ken Doll might actually want him a Ken Doll. And because you so hung up on society's beauty constructs, what handsome is, you chasing Ken and Ken chasing Ken. Your boyfriend got a boyfriend. But you didn't even pay, you didn't even realize that. Because you so hung up on what handsome is. Instead of just looking at the heart first. And this is the thing. Who define, who, how do you define attractiveness? Where does it come from? Where does it come from? You got to get to the root of it. Where does it come from? A magazine? A movie you saying it just come from your heart it just in your heart it's just what your heart says that that's what you attracted to or is that look the look that did not want you in eighth grade is that the look the look that every other woman is attracted to and so if you get them that mean you the queen of the world that mean you on top of them other women you get to make them jealous they got to look up to you. Now you the envy of every woman. What is the root of it? And when you understand that, you're going to understand how you may be walking past your husband every day. And now here's where I want you to understand. If you got this far, put be blessed in the comments. This is what I want you to understand now. I'm not saying to and and if you see somebody in the comments that didn't get this far and they making this argument tell them go watch the video at the 30 minute mark i'm not saying to be with someone you're not attracted to because attraction does matter what i'm saying is evaluate the root of your desires 
of your belief around what attractiveness is and evaluate where it comes from. And then when you get to the root of it, it may broaden your scope. It may broaden your taste for the opposite sex. And you may now see the beauty in people that you were overlooking when you look at them for themselves and not in comparison to society's programming and standards of beauty. When you look at them as a human being and you saying that you praying for your man, you praying for your woman, but God saying you are not looking at them the way I look at them. You judging them outwardly instead of inwardly first. God says, I have no respect of persons, meaning that I don't pick favorites, meaning that I love everybody. I love their heart. I love them for who they are. And everyone becomes beautiful in my sight. That's what God is telling you. But he said, so I'm sending you these people who will treat you amazing, but you are comparing them against unrealistic standards. But And you cannot see yourself so you don't even meet the standards that you hold in this other person to. You giving yourself more credit than you really deserve. And you holding them up here saying you got to meet this standard and you really coming in right here. And so you got people coming in right here where you at. You got people coming in right here a little bit above you. But you want this right here because you looking from insecurity. You're looking for, from immaturity. You're looking from your program lens instead of your heart. So now understand this. I'm not saying be with somebody to where you look at them and you feel a little throw up in your mouth. You throw up in your mouth. when you. I'm not saying be with somebody that you can't stomach because of their breath or their toenails or they don't lotion and their hands feel like sandpaper or you know they don't want to wash their face or do the hair or you know i'm not saying be with somebody who is repulsive because they don't love themselves and they're not taking care of themselves that's not what i'm saying but what i'm saying is change the way you look at people and remember what the good book tell you as you judge you will be judged and in this one, I'm going to drop this here bomb on you now. It's a lot of single people who are single because of how you are judging people. You meeting great people. You meeting husband and wife material. But because of how you are judging them, so you will be judged. As you judge, you will be judged. So people looking at you and with the same lenses you looking at them through, they looking at you through them same lenses. And guess what? You ain't lining up. But when you change your lenses, you attract what you become. So you will start to look at people differently with more appreciation. And then they will look at you with more appreciation for your flaws, for your imperfections. Because it might be something on you that's off. And you, you want grace for that. And you and you saying, well, I know, you know, I know my eyes a little big. Or I know I ain't in the best shape in the world. Or I know I ain't this. I know I ain't that. But I still deserve this. And so you telling yourself, you telling the world, give me a break for my imperfections. But then you're not doing the same, you're not giving the same grace with the with the people with the man or the woman that's right in your face, trying to get to know you, trying to love you. Now, if they just repulsive because they don't want to brush their teeth, they don't want to take care of themselves, they don't want to wash their clothes, you know, they don't want to do anything in the area of self-love. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this person who is really nothing wrong with them. Walking right past you every day. Really ain't nothing wrong with them. Great, could be a great person. 
but you're judging them the wrong way because you're coming from the wrong place in your heart. Hey, this is Tony Gaskins. I apologize for another long video, but I'm just trying to get this whole thing out. Thank you so much. God bless you. We'll talk soon.